नवमूर्ति विनोदकारी फलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समीप रहो हमारी यह घनश्याम महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय सुप्रीम ओमायरी our beloved Bhagwan Swami Narayan, the path maker to our liberation, Pujapad Guruji, Pujya Santo, all you devotees who are watching, my humble Jay Swami Narayan. President Obama, Queen Elizabeth II, Prime Minister or President, you can say, Tony Blair. All these are rulers or are those who run superpower countries. The United States is a superpower. The United Kingdom is a superpower. And these are the people who run such tremendous energetic, strong nations that are foundations of the world. Just for example, if President Obama, who lives in the White House currently and is the President of the United States in his second term, if he was to leave his White House and if he was to go to New York to the slums of New York and meet the people there, the poor people, greet them, say hello to them, say how are you, have a conversation with them. How would that look in people's eyes? Wouldn't that be something different? Wouldn't that be something that people would look and say, this should be printed in news? President Obama went to New York today to the slums of New York, and he greeted poor people. He greeted people that are not valued in the world, you can say. That would be something different, right? In the same particular manner, when the Supreme Lord, who lives in his Akshradham, when he descends on this earth and meets and greets the people of this earth, it is the same situation. First, I gave you my example. The principle of my example is, let's just take President Obama in the form or in the place of Bhagwan. The White House is his Akshardham, and the slums of New York is this earth, and the people who he greets is us. Just like how President came out from his White House to meet the people in New York, the poor people of slums. Bhagwan himself only once descends from his Akshardham and takes a form of a human and meets and greets the people who have no value compared to him. Just like how the poor people don't have any value compared to the president. The president has power over the United States, the United States Army. The poor people have power over nothing. There is no comparison, right? In the same particular manner, when Bhagwan comes, there is no comparison. Yet, there is a question that arises in our mind. Why does Bhagwan still come if there is no value of coming, if there is no value of meeting poor people? If there's nothing to it, then why does Bhagwan still come on this earth to meet such people? Why does Bhagwan assume a form of a human? Why does Bhagwan do all these things? Can't he do it from his Akshardham? If he is called Bhagwan, if he's called God, can't he do all these things, meet and greet from his Akshardham? We call him supreme, we call him almighty, we call him beyond everything. 
well, if he is everything, if he can do everything, if he's the all doer, can't he do this? Of course he can. He can do anything and everything he wants. But there's a particular reason that Bhagwan descends on earth. There's six primary reasons or purposes that Bhagwan takes form that I shortly want to tell you. But the main reason is inside of one of these six points. First and foremost, Bhagwan Swami Narayan incarnates on this earth to save Dharmadev and Bhakti Mata from the harassment of the Asurs, meaning evil demonic people. Secondly, to spread his supreme knowledge and his upasana. Third, wishing to impart his avatars and their devotees his upasana, meaning other, dev other avatars like Ram, Krishna, Vishnu, all these avatars, their devotees, to impart knowledge to them so they can also become part of the Swaminarayan sect and understand the true supremacy of Bhagwan. Third, a fourth, to establish Ekantik Dharma and to protect his Ekantik Satpurushas. Fifth, to take all those Mumukshas, all those seekers back to Akshradham and to make new Mumukshas. And finally, the number one reason, the main reason he comes on this earth is to bestow bliss on the supreme ekantic bhaktas who have love for him and to fulfill their devotional aspirations, to shower love upon them. Meaning, in the Vachnamrut, Gaudiyani 5th chapter, I'm going to read Bhagwan's words, what Bhagwan is saying, and you'll understand my point. Swami Narayan Hare. So Sri Maharaj explained, God assumes an avatar for only one reason. Having surrendered himself to the bhakti of those devotees who have intense love for him, God assumes whichever form the devotee wish for in order to grant them bliss. He then fulfills all the desires of his devotees. Since the devotees are corporeal and have physical bodies, God also becomes corporeal and assumes a physical body and showers affection upon those devotees. In addition to this, he suppresses his powers, meaning all the powers he has, he pretty much encloses them or he doesn't show them. In addition to this, he suppresses his powers and behaves with the devotees as a son or as a companion or a friend or a relative. Because of this, the devotees may not maintain much protocol, meaning respect for God. Nonetheless, God showers his affection upon the devotees in whichever manner he desires. Thus, the only main reason why God assumes an avatar is to fulfill the desires of his beloved devotees. This is the only reason. All the other five reasons are just, you can say, backups. Or just, Bhagwan is Bhagwan, so he, this also comes with him. You know? Just like if uh, if you invite a king to your home, then obviously the king alone will not come. His guards will come, his cabinet will come, his maids will come, everyone will come. In the same way, Bhagwan assumes an avatar and descends on this earth. Main reason is to establish bliss, bliss and give happiness to his devotees. But while doing that, he also establishes ekantik dharma. He also for the reason he also spreads his upasana and knowledge. So this is the true reason why Bhagwan comes. Well, let's take a look back in time, in the time of Sri Ji Maharaj, one of these incidents, so we can understand Bhagwan's lila or Bhagwan's divine incidents to a better depth. So one time Bhagwan went to Junagar, a grand city, and there was a grand parade held there <clears throat> and by Jina Bhai Darbar, who organized the whole event. Now, thousands and thousands of devotees came to Junagar because it was a great parade, and Bhagwan was actually sitting on an elephant. This was never seen in that time. And Sriji Maharaj himself, Bhagwan himself, thousands of devotees in that time understood that this was the Supreme Lord. 
Just imagine the sight of thousands and thousands of people and instruments and a great parade was happening. In that time, Bhagwan was seated at the top, at, at top of an elephant and the entire city had come out for his darshan. Now, as he was going through the city, he, be, he, he came to the middle, which was called the Divan Chok. The Divan Chok is where pretty much where the king's palace is, and it's like the center square of the whole city. So the elephant, Bhagwan, the whole parade came at that time, and a small boy, unknowingly, a poor boy, he came and he was watching from afar, Sri Ji Maharaj, just having his darshan, how wondrous he looked. Sri Ji Maharaj obviously knew that that boy was there, but the boy had three cucumbers. We call them kakari, he said cucumbers. And the boy, he had a thought that how great would it be if Sri Ji Maharaj were to eat these cucumbers. Now look, just think, Pause. Bhagwan himself, in a great grand parade, there was many, many, you can say, political people probably in the parade. There's many, many devotees in the parade. There's the king who was watching from afar in his palace, everything. And a small boy from afar with three cucumbers. And this boy has a thought that how great would it be if Bhagwan eats these cucumbers. Now obviously Bhagwan is Bhagwan, he is all knowing. So through his omniscient powers, Bhagwan found out that this boy had this thought of eating these cucumbers, that if I would eat these cucumbers. So just to fulfill that boy's wish, Bhagwan signaled that boy from afar to come closer. So the boy came closer and he did one of these signals to throw up the cucumbers. The boy could not believe it. Bhagwan, uh, the boy threw up all three cucumbers one by one. And then the boy signaled Maharaj to eat the cucumbers. Obviously Maharaj, just to fulfill the wish of his devotee, a boy who is unknown to him, a boy who is, has no value, just to fulfill his wish, just to bestow bliss on him, there was thousands of people but Bhagwan chose him. Bhagwan chose him to give happiness to. Just to fulfill his wish, Bhagwan started eating those cucumbers in front of the whole parade. Just think, if you were on stage at a particular program and there was thousands and thousands of people sitting in that assembly, it was a very, very, very serious, serious program. And out of nowhere, if you start eating food on, in the middle of the stage, how would that look? What would people think? It would be something that you can say rude or something that's not respectable or something that's not a, per, a, a regular person in society would do. Yet, Bhagwan himself did it. Bhagwan did not look or did not see that, oh, these people think of me like this, these people think of me like this, no. Just to give bliss upon that boy, Bhagwan ate those cucumbers. Now, remember, Bhagwan was where? In Divan Chok. Right there, there was the king's palace. And there, from afar, Mangalji Divan was there, and another Nuab, Hamid Khan, was there looking afar. Now, Mangalji Divan was kind of against Bhagwan. So, he told the Nuab that, look at Maharaj, he does not know anything. He does not, he's in front of a grand parade and how could he be eating these cucumbers? There's thousands of people looking at him. Is this something you should be doing or he should be doing? Well, Nuab gave a spectacular, spectacular answer by saying that, I agree, he is Bhagwan, but since he is Bhagwan, he can only do this. No one else would be able to. If someone did do it, if a king like myself did do this, then people would not respect me anymore. People would not listen to me anymore. But since he is Bhagwan, he did this. So the whole parade went by and it ended. But the whole purpose or the whole moral of the story was that Bhagwan even 
looks at upon the little as people, little as souls, you can say, the people who have no value and elevates them and gives them bliss because that's what he's assigned or that's what his purpose is to do. If you were assigned to do some kind of task, suppose you're a student in high school and your teacher gives you a really hard essay, you can say project, and you have to finish before the end of the year. Obviously, you're assigned to do this. Now, no matter what, you have time, but what you have to do is finish the essay. This is your task. And at that time, when you finish your essay, that's the only way you'll get your grade and finalize everything. In the same way, Bhagwan, this is what he's here to do. There's no other particular reason. But the main reason he comes is to fulfill his tasks. And he does it no matter what. Regarding that point, we see Bhagwan as not only a figure that is great, but we also see Bhagwan as a figure that is very, very close to us. We believe that Bhagwan is always close to us, always with us, but it's not so much so that it's fulfilling ourself. Why? We don't feel fulfilled by even believing this. The only reason for that is because we don't believe Bhagwan to be, we do believe him to be the doer, but we don't believe him to be you can say, he's doing it for our good. Due to that, some of these events that we look at in his, like just like this small event where he gives the cucumbers to the boy, we see this as, Bhagwan is doing this, but why? Always some, there's always some people that think that, why is Bhagwan doing these things? Bhagwan is Bhagwan, why is he doing this small stuff? But you have to understand, that Bhagwan is always looking at the good of all, everyone. So he has to do this, and he is doing everything that we can't see out of. In the same particular manner, I have another charitra where Bhagwan shows his and gives his, and showers his bliss upon a small boy. So he was in a village called Pipli at Dadabai's residence. And there was a young boy named Burao. Now he was standing afar, far. Budao was a old, or Budao was a poor boy, but he knew how to play the sarangi. Now he played the sarangi very well. He was a street performer, you can say, and he would go place to place and play the sarangi to get money. So from afar, he was just standing there and admiring Sriji Maharaj <coughs> in the residence of Dada Bain. Now Bhagwan saw him, and Bhagwan asked. Dadabai, who is that boy? Dadabai said that he's a street performer. He, is, uh, he comes by time to time. He performs his instrument, the sarangi, and then he leaves. Bhagwan says, call, call him, please. So Dadabai called him. Now the whole assembly was there. Naja Jogya was there. Sura Kachar was there. There's many, many great devotees there at that time. Now, Bhagwan says, what do you play? He said, Maharaj, I play the sarangi. So Maharaj says, go ahead and play the sarangi for me. So the boys started playing. Now, to anyone's imagination, a street performer, a, old, or a poor boy, he started playing the sarangi so well that Sriji Maharaj became pleased. But he became pleased so much so that all the gold ornaments he had all the lavish garments he had, all the money that he had, Bhagwan tokens from his side, everything, he started taking everything one by one off of himself and gave it to the boy. Now, the boy did not want anything in return. That's why Bhagwan did this. The main intention, the boy wanted to play to please Bhagwan, but Bhagwan, why did he start taking his garments off? Why did he start taking his ornaments out? Why did he start giving gold coins away? Because he saw the intention that the boy did not want anything. And secondly, to bestow his bliss upon the boy, to make him happy. Since he was poor 
if he had financial trouble, obviously these garments are expensive, the coins, the ornaments, everything is expensive. He can use this to, you know, get by and live a good, prosperous life. Due to that, Bhagwan took off everything and gave it to him. And the boy became pleased because he saw that Sriji Maharaj was pleased. But the funny thing is that Naja Jogi Sura Kacha was looking from afar. So they saw that Sriji Maharaj is in a really good mood. And if Bhagwan is in a really good mood, he might give away his manki, which is a really, really precious horse. And uh, in that time was valued the most. So what they plotted was Naja Jogia had very mischievous horses. Very, very, uh, you can say, Rambakshas horses. They were very, very bad. So Sudakachar told Naja Jogia to release the horses in the assembly, in the assembly gathered, so everyone would scatter. Everyone would run away because the horses obviously can kill anyone. So Sudakachar did, or Naja Jogia released his horses, and all those horses scattered everyone, and Budai also ran away. <laughs> the whole plot was to make Budai stop gaining or stop <laughs> getting all the gold coins, the ornaments, and Naja Jogya and Surakachar fulfilled their task because they released the horses and everyone split. <laughs> that was, this was just a funny incident in that time. But the point of the story is to fulfill and to make that boy happy, Bhagwan bestowed his bliss through giving things. Bhagwan can do this in many ways. He can give things. He can do it by mere sight. He can, in uh, Panchara, he did Ras. Uh, in Vartal, he did Rangotso. All these different kinds of Utsos that Bhagwan did in his time was to bestow bliss on his saints and devotees. He fulfilled it, and then he ascended back to his Akshradham. So, for those who don't know why that Bhagwan, why does he come on this earth, or why they have, that if Bhagwan is almighty and supreme, what is the reason? Well, now you know that Bhagwan comes just to give happiness to his devotees. Saying this, my humble Jay Swami Narayan, now I will give it to Pujya Rushilab Swami to give his lecture. वर्णिवे शरमणीय दर्शनम मंदहासरुचिरानाम बुजम पूजितम सुरनरोतमेर मुदा धर्मनंदन महमविचिन्तय श्रीगणेशयाम महाराजनी अल्माइटी सुप्रीम लॉर्ड भगवान स्वामी नारायण पूज्य गुरुजी ऑल ऑफ ड्यूटीज जय स्वामी नारायण Today we are going to discuss on the principle. Without principle, even science cannot believe in the things. There are many great scientists like uh, Albert Einstein, Sir Isaac Newton, or more than previous Galileo and so many other scientists. But all have research on such point or such things but they also declare their own principles relating particular things or particular phenomena and even 
science also believes in principles the science and religion both are in some ways different but still they have more similarity science believes in principle religion also believes in principle because just as science is found on the basis of their particular principles religion also found and stood on the base of particular principles whether religion has many many branches or departments but all departments or all branches are also have their personal basis according to their own principles now the science what what the science believes we do not concern but what religion is con- religion is related to principle that is our main purpose just as many scientists has have given their own principle after pra- practicing more and more in the particular phenomena or particular things and after they derive some principles not similar like that but bhagwan swami narayan he is the supreme god and he is the all knower all doer and that's why as a source of all kinds of knowledge he had given us many many kind of kinds of principles if we think for science today's science bhagwan swami narayan has given us the scientific knowledge before 200 years bhagwan says there is even air or space in the atom which science has described just near 150 years not more than that but bhagwan swami narayan had described the same thing before to 200 years bhagwan says in the vachanamrut about the moon bhagwan says when we see the moon from earth we can see it like a plate but just when we go near and near to the moon we will visualize the moon in very vast and huge form so bhagwan says that one can also reach to the moon one can also easily journey to the moon from earth even at the time when there is no any space technologies available for available uh, with nasa but let it be there is not our point of discussion but our point of discussion is that religion religious principle bhagwan swami nar has described so many principles but the main principle he has described in the vachanamrut and that is the vachanamrut 21st of gurda second chapter the principle he has described is that if a person realizes the glory of manifest god and his bhakt the sant in exactly the same way as he realizes the glory of past avatars of god such as ram krishna etc as well as the glory of past sadhu such as narad the sankadik sukji jad bharat hanuman ji uddhav etc then nothing remains to be understood on the path of liberation this is his main principle that only god and his son not only god and his son but the manifest form of god and the manifest saints are only the grantor of liberation means ultimate liberation this is the main principle given us by bhagwan swami narayan when we follow any scientific principle we can definitely achieve or get some 
new experience, uh, experience or some new things. Just as we enjoy lighting or uh, any kind of electrical instrument, behind that a particular type of principle is working. Similarly, in religious factor, when we enjoy, when we experience any God-related things in our life, that is also only due to some principle. So if we want to experience real happiness in this real religious world, we have to know about what is the principle. If we know about the main principle, then we can easily attain inner peace. And without it, if we practice in thousand other manners, but we cannot get our real goal. Because our real goal is to enjoy the real bliss and real happiness of Bhagwan. If we want to experience that bliss, we have to know about principle and after knowing the principle, we have to follow it. When we follow the principle, we can definitely attain our goal that is inner and eternal happiness. Now Bhagwan says here, if we realize the glory of manifest gods, just as we realize the glory of the past avatars of Bhagwan, just as Ram, Krishna, etc. So now we definitely say that we understood even more glory than the past avatars of Bhagwan for the manifest form of Bhagwan. Means we understand the more glory of Bhagwan Swaminarayan than the past avatars. But Bhagwan has described here and that is why it has some meaning, some more deep meaning. No doubt, outwardly we understand Bhagwan Swaminarayan is the Supreme Lord, the Lords of, uh, Lord of Lords. But in our behavior, sometimes our behavior itself shows that we have lacking of knowledge of supremacy of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. We cannot firmly believe by heart the supremacy of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. And that's why in some times in front of Bhagwan's form means Murti of Bhagwan, we cannot behave properly. Just as if, suppose, a Bhagwan Ram with his Danus and Ban stood here just as a human at the time can be able to jog with others can be able to doing uh, not properly sitting before him or not uh, giving him respect and uh, keep silence and so uh, so many other manners but as we have no such form of faith, such glory of Bhagwan's Murti, and we understood that this is only idol, this is only Murti, either made of stone or made of uh, different kinds of metals. And that's why we cannot behave properly in front of Bhagwan. But if we realize that this is not the statue or this is not the Murti, but Bhagwan himself, then we automatically have some different experience in our heart. We automatically feel some divinity while before, while standing or sitting before the form of Bhagwan. So this is the one thing, and the another and the most important thing is that Bhagwan says we should also realize this. Today's Bhakta and Sant in exactly the same way as we realize the glory of past Bhaktas or past Sadhus such as Narad, the Sankadik, Sukhji, Jadbarat, Hanumanji, Uddhavji, etc. Do you know Narad? 
he is the he was the greatest devotee of bhagwan but not more than that the sankadik not most of us know about sukje sukje is, is the speaker of shrimad bhagwat but we cannot know about more than that we have no more information jad bharat we have little bit knowledge about jad bharat story but not we fully know about his saintliness his tolerance and his other virtues but we all know about hanuman ji even small kids from india from small kids to elderly person old age person all know about hanuman ji because i think there is no any village in india without the temple of hanuman ji or if there is no temple but still all people know about hanuman ji and worship him as god bhagwan swami and describe hanuman ji's name here in the list of the name of saints meaning hanuman ji is not the god himself he is the son and bhakt of ramchandra ji in anandra vachanamrut bhagwan swami and himself glorify hanuman ji as his uh, for his uh, for his uh, devotion for ramchandra ji like a chest woman uh, similarly we should have the same understanding meaning the glory of the sant just as we understand the glory of hanuman ji we worship him we performing aarti of hanuman ji we worship him with all elaborate raid, uh, rituals we offer him garlands we offer him dandwats we offer him uh, delicious foods we offer his abhishek in same way if we understand the glory of the manifest saints means today's saints just as we have understood the glory of hanuman ji then bhagwan swami and says then nothing remain remains to be understood on the path of liberation if we understood this much glory of manifest saints means today's saints just as we have understood and we have in our behavior the devotion of hanuman ji then we definitely can offer the same devotion for manifest saints meaning we also can offer garlands to saints we also prostrate before the saints we also performing his aarti we also performs his abhishek is doing his darshan respectfully offer him thar means food but no doubt we outwardly says that we have much more glory of manifest saints than hanuman ji but in our behavior we have no glory meaning only a little bit glory and in fact a uh, human psychology is that when a person is living on this earth we cannot even speak two words for his praises and when the person is not on this earth means when he passed away we will offer him garlands we will crying for him we describe his virtues but not while he he was living why it is not our fault but this is the human psychology but if we change this our this human psychology from our heart and if we try to understand the glory of the real saint who is now living on this earth who is the grantor of ultimate liberation 
and if we praise him if we offer him whatever we have or even we cannot do anything at least we offer him respect that is much more thing for us more endeavor to please god and to attain our ultimate liberation this is the only way to this is the only easiest way to attain the divine bara bhagwan swami narayan akshardham because without saints without the help of saints we cannot reach the abad because we have not seen the abad and the saint who originally the residence of that abad so without nor how can we walk on the path if we have no gps and we have only address we cannot reach the place and no doubt after many and many and we we can reach the place but the easiest way is to G- use gps navigator similarly the saint is the knower of the path and the divine abode of akshardham if we follow his instructions we can easily walk on the path of liberation and we can easily reach our destination our final destination that is the divine abode of bhagwan swami narayan akshardham this is the main principle described in the vachanamrut by bhagwan swami narayan and bhagwan says for this principle whether this principle is understood after being told once or after being told a thousand times whether in whether it is understood today or after a thousand years there is no option but to understand it so all other possibilities are closed for us this is only one way this is only way to reach akshardham to attain ultimate liberation and that is to understand the glory of bhagwan as well as his true saint if we cannot understand the real glory of bhagwan himself but if we understood the glory of manifest saints the saint can give us the knowledge of the bhagwan's glory because only saint is the knower of bhagwan we cannot understand even the bhagwan is standing before us as a human but the saint who is the knower of all who is the knower and who is the exper- who who has the real ex- experience means feeling of god he can only able to make us understood about the form of bhagwan and that is why if we have no knowledge about the glory of bhagwan and if we have understood the glory of saint and we have with the saint humbly and respectfully offer him whatever we have even our emotion then saint can give us the knowledge of bhagwan sant can give us the ultimate liberation sant can give us the divine abara bhagwan's akshardham and that is why bhagwan says the importance of this principle that we have to understand this principle in this very birth if we want to attain ultimate liberation by this birth if you want this is the glory of the saint and bhagwan says if you ask the brahma shivji and other devs they would also explain the same glory of the manifest form of god and the manifest form of the saint is exactly the same as the glory of past forms of god and the saint so this is the only way to attain liberation no doubt there are many other ways described in the scriptures but here in this vachanamrut bhagwan swami narayan himself says that even understood this this much glory of bhagwan and saint then 
he has everything in his hand he has nothing left means nothing remains to do on the path of liberation that is why we have the main thing this is the main principle behind the psychology or behind the philosophy of ultimate liberation hari krishna maharaj ni jai shri ganeshyam maharaj ni jai श्रीपतिम श्रीधरम सर्वेश्वर भक्तिधर्माज वासुदेव हरे माधव केशव कामद का स्वामीनारायण नीलकंठम श्रीघनश्याम महाराज नीजय